<laughs> okay. So, uh, hi everybody, I'm, I'm your host Matt, and today I'm delighted to introduce you to a very special guest this evening, uh, Eloise Erlings. Oh, I'm saying that correctly. Mm -hmm. Eloise Erlings, uh, aka Luxier, or, or Luxier, uh, aka Eloise Erlings. Uh, so, it's, it's very nice to meet you, Luxier. Nice to meet you too. Absolutely. Matt. Um, so, Luxier, uh, I guess I got a couple of questions to ask you. All right. We're, we're basically a beautiful Kerala uh, Palakkad, and uh, Luxury is hosting uh, this retreat for seven days. Or seven days, and uh, she does like such a fantastic job just bringing everything. So, Luxury is basically a yoga teacher. Uh, she's committed to Vedic culture and knowledge. Uh, she's attended her first yoga teacher training with uh, Shivananda organization, Kerala, in 2010, and also. She's completed the Sama Yoga training, teacher training in Bali during, uh, during March 2015. Uh, from 2011 to 2013, Lakshmi was part of a three year residential course of Vedanta and Sanskrit under the tutelage of Prabhu, Swami, Dayananda, Sun. Saraswati. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, in Coimbatore, India, and this was an uh, extremely precious time for her, getting exposed to. Uh, the vision of Vedanta that you are the whole and you are totally lovable and uh, complete just the way you are. These teachings have touched your heart and tremendously, and it's Luxury's goal to allow others to see the same. Uh, she's not based in Dubai and teaches Hatha Yoga. In addition to yoga classes, uh, Luxury also shares her knowledge of Sanskrit Vedic chanting and uh, Vedanta through classes in Dubai and also retreats around the world. So without further ado, let's uh, let's start asking this beautiful Lakshya a couple of questions here. Uh, so Lakshya, like, you can tell us a little bit about your background and you know, your humble beginning, where did it start for you? Sure, yeah. Um, I first got introduced to yoga through my mom. She convinced me to come to the class when I was about 17, I think. And I reluctantly joined with her. And I found in the class that I was doing quite well. The teacher kept complimenting me. So I was really, really happy. How old were you? 17. Oh. Yeah. But then I didn't continue. I thought it was a little boring and slow. So, however, the next year I moved to Montreal and I started university and it was getting a little busy and stressed and a lot of work to do. And so I thought, okay, I need to relax. Let me join the yoga class. So I started joining the yoga classes there and it really helped me a lot. Um, it gave me so much relaxation and it helped me to stretch the body and I just felt really good after every class. So it really helped me to survive the cold winters there. I kept this practice up throughout uh, my degree, three years, and then I moved back to Dubai and I continued doing it. And in Dubai I was working and Again, I, I found myself to be uh, a little under pressure from work, and so I sought yoga for releasing pressure. Oh, what were you doing? I was working in uh, marketing sales and uh, interior design. So, uh, yeah. Stressful job. It was uh, quite hectic, yeah, client interaction mostly, and uh, yeah, they can be a little tough sometimes. <laughs> So, and then I thought, okay, uh, let me just go to India and travel and see how it is and do a teacher training just for my own practice. So you just spontaneously decided? Yeah, yeah. I was sick of uh, being in Dubai, so I thought, okay, let me do that. So I did that and I just fell in love with the country, the culture, the history, the practices, yoga, the philosophy, the ancient languages, everything. And from that moment, I knew it was very crystal clear to me that I want to continue in this, that I want to go back to the corporate world. I really want to know more about this and about yoga, the philosophies, and really have a good understanding. So I was very lucky to um, have met my guru, who just started the three-year course. So I joined that course, which the emphasis of which was not yoga, but it was more philosophy and Sanskrit, and it was amazing. So that was the background and after finishing that I moved back to Dubai and started teaching yoga and also 
the other uh, valuable uh, things which I learned in my time there. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for that lecture. That was uh, very beautiful. Uh, uh, so, I mean, I, you know, I'd like also to point out the fact that Alshino uh, doesn't speak Sanskrit. Sanskrit is a very ancient Indian language that uh, I'm Indian, but I don't know how to speak Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. so, uh, clearly, like, is that something that you learned in the course while you Yes, know? yeah, because all the scriptures are written in Sanskrit, so we need to have a, at least a basic understanding of the language structure. Right, and yeah, yeah you see it so perfectly, so that that's one thing that I've noticed you compared to a lot of yoga teachers, both yoga teachers here, that your pronunciation is correct. Mm -hmm. And that's impressive. Yeah, I think I mentioned that to you before as yeah. well. When, when we're doing the yoga poses, I'm not worried about you messing up on the line. I'm just <laughs> yeah. aware that I'm worried about more about my poses. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, second question, uh, Lakshmi. So, I mean, you mentioned that uh, you got gone to live a spiritual life in your early 20s. Mm. But what really triggered that turning point for you to towards this path of spiritual mm. life? That's a good question. Uh, basically, it was. Uh, well, a tough breakup, I would say, which led me to ask questions. Yeah, I realized I had placed my complete happiness and being into someone else, and as soon as he wasn't available anymore, I was scattered and I started thinking, how is it that someone else can determine my happiness or can determine my state of mind or how I am? Shouldn't that source be inside? So that started uh, the whole questioning and, and searching and um, I guess that's what really led me to, to start this whole journey uh, of finding that happiness inside and being happy no matter what happens and not being dependent on any situation or any other person. So you should have not have external happiness, like basically it should come from within. Yeah, it comes from, from within, yeah. yeah. So that's what you've been developing here in your life? Yeah. How happy from inside, yeah. rather than have, tell people that be happy. Yeah, now. rather than uh, relying on external things for your happiness, yeah. going outside, seeking after things, you know, the whole life or going after things, but just taking a time to reverse it and, and go inside, yeah, and uh, finding that actually we have a whole abundance of happiness, love inside, which we just need to understand and uh, find. Yeah. Right. Well, that's great. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty inspirational. Um, so, I guess my third question is, uh, you know, I want what is the ultimate goal in life according to you? Uh, you know, and you know, it's human, humankind. We're all humankind. So, what are we put on this earth for? We're such a vast billions of people. Yeah. And uh, like according, you know, your personal, your personal people. Yeah. I think uh, the, the ultimate goal in a human life, um, there are many along the way, but the ultimate final goal I think is to find the peace and happiness inside and to really understand, realize that you know, God is within you. It is within me, it is within everyone, it is all around. So to really be able to understand that and live by it and then so many problems will go away from our lives. But on the way to reaching you know, that goal, many others are there, I would say, to live a, you know, um, a life with least harming to other people, a life where you can uplift each other, uh, get the good out in each other, a life where you can, if you have a family, you know, there are different duties that we have to follow, different goals depending on where we are in our lives. But ultimately, to live a life which causes the least harm to other people and um, where we have uh, some spiritual element within the life, within our daily uh, regiments, and ultimately to find that peace, that love, the happiness, the fullness, wholeness within ourselves. Because if we have that in ourselves, other people can also have it within themselves and the whole world will change. You know, less fighting, less politics, less arguments or competition. Yeah, more of understanding will be there.
But I also believe that I think also is if you're positive and you're a person, not positive, but if you have this good energy within you, then you, know, you can definitely support other people rather than like do you believe in that? Like as if you had bad energy, it would be difficult to uh, support other people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think we can all be an inspiration to each other and by sending out a lot of positivity you can attract that as well and you can allow it to kind of pass on to others as well. Thank you, Thank you so much, Lakshya. And uh, one last thing, like can you do the Indian head nod for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, okay. Well everybody like check out Lakshya, she's at lakshayoga.com. Uh, she's all over everything on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Pretty much mentioned Yeah. Uh, anything else that you'd like to say to the public as final comments? Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti.